Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us as we announce uh, a very exciting partnership that the city of Jackson has entered into with the Salvation Army. We are grateful to the Salvation Army uh, and the many volunteers that work alongside the Salvation Army for the work that they are assisting the city of Jackson with as it relates to homeless prevention services. The total amount of the uh, grant that they have received is for $517,706. These funds will be committed in an effort to help prevent people uh, from being, uh, from being uh, taken out of their homes. This is for rental assistance and those who are struggling uh, to make payments such as with their utilities. As we know, COVID-19 has been a pandemic on multiple fronts, not only to the physical health of people within our community, but the financial health of many people within our community. And so it is important that we have programs and partnerships as the one that we are announcing today so that we can have a holistic approach to all of the things that our communities are suffering from, not only locally, but nationwide. I am happy to stand along the Salvation Army, and I would like to ask Major Robert Lau to join me at this moment uh, so that he can share more details over uh, concerning this partnership. Thank you, Major Lau. Well, Mr. Mayor, we appreciate the opportunity to come alongside this great city to help the needs of individuals in this city. We find that uh, during a time like this, you can never have too many partners, and so we're very grateful for the city and uh, the administration for inviting the Salvation Army to come and help our fellow uh, citizens here in the Jackson City area. And we realize that COVID has caused a lot of uh, grief, but we are in the greatest country of the world at the greatest time in history, and we know we're going to be able to make a difference because of this partnership. Now, it's very uh, important that we understand that uh, with this kind of uh, gift, uh, this kind of uh, grant, uh, we got a lot of things that has to take place and there's going to be a lot of people looking for assistance so we have to have parameters and so what I wanted to do today is just share that the Salvation Army has already started the program as of this past Friday uh, in anticipation to knowing that we're going to be, uh, need to meet these needs. Our office hour, hours are Monday through Friday from 8.30 until 12 p.m., 1 p.m. until 4 p.m. and everything that I say to you today uh, about these hours and stuff will be located on our website and you can find that at www.salvationarmyjackson.org. In order to be helped, you'll have to uh, provide a court-ordered eviction notice. It's very crucial. There's are requirements that are there. Court-ordered eviction notice. Uh, you'll need to call for appointments. There's no walk-ins. You can understand with as many people that are in need we just can't have lined up out the door. So everybody, it's important that you realize that you need to call in and the number to call is 601-982-4881. When you call in, you'll be pre-screened on the phone. That way we can let you know for sure what you need to bring in, when your time to come in will be, and uh, it'll make it easier. If you show up without an appointment, we're going to have to tell you you got to walk outside, call in, because we're doing the triage over the phone so that we can help the most people uh, at the, uh, the time that we have. Now what's required when you come in will be a photo ID, social security cards, a lease agreement, eviction notice, income documents, and recent bills. Well, Major, that seems like a whole lot. Well, again, we need to be very accountable with what we have. We want to be able to help the most people. So again, photo ID, social security cards, lease agreement, eviction notice, income documents, and any recent bills that you have. And understand that uh, as you come in, as you make that initial phone call, they'll give you a time when you'll come. A lot of the triage will be done over the phone. You'll know what you need to bring. And when you get in, when you get to us, we have to uh, finalize everything. But you just know that uh, we're here to serve. We want to make a difference in your life. And again, we want to say thank you to the city and uh, to, uh, uh, to the mayor and his staff for bringing us into this partnership. And we promise you we'll do the best with what we have. And again, this city is a, a great place to serve. So thank you very much. Thank you. Once again, I'd like to thank Major Lau and the Salvation Army. In fact, I'd ask if we give them a round of applause for their work. 
the uh, greatest form of violence is poverty. Uh, and it really reflects the best of who we are as Jacksonians when we respond to people in need. And so uh, in our efforts as a city to create what we see as a dignity economy, we feel it's important that we focus on areas of need such as this uh, because we want to reflect the inherent dignity in every person. And so I thank you for your work and I thank you for your support and we're grateful for the resources uh, that have been made available. To that end, uh, we also want to announce that the city of Jackson uh, is expecting an additional $1.4 million uh, within our planning and, development, planning and development department, specifically in our housing division for homelessness response. We know that we have seen a great number of people who have uh, fallen prey to homelessness for a variety of reasons. And so we want to have the resources to bear. Uh, I thank the good people in our planning and development department that work on this daily. And as we see the issue of homelessness, the best response, the most proactive response to that is to have a programmatic response to it. And so we're fortunate that we have these resources and we look forward to availing them in this way. And so uh, I will open up for questions at the conclusion of this press conference, but I also want to address another matter and I'd like to ask the police chief to join me if he doesn't mind uh, as we deal with the issue of our recent homicides. I wanna make it clear uh, for us it has never been about a milestone or a number. For every life and every single incident matters to us. We know that citizens are experiencing a high rate of violence, especially between uh, this time for COVID-19. I wanna be clear that we do see this as a moment of crisis, not only for us in Jackson, but nationally. And it is important that we band together. It is important that we use all hands on deck uh, and that means that we're excited about things like our new recruiting class that just started this weekend uh, and look forward to more recruits coming. But we know that it is not just on our police officers in order to solve the issue of crime. There has been a correlation between the rising rate of crime and the, and the, the uh, defunding of social services every year from our state. As we can see in the midst of COVID-19 where people are facing issues like eviction, when people are facing uh, socioeconomic challenges, we have seen a sharp increase all across the nation as it pertains to crime. And so I not only see this from the perspective of being mayor, I have seen this in a very personal way in my family, having an older brother who was a victim of being shot in the head. And so I know all too well how families deal with challenges like this. And so we want them to know, uh, all of those families that are dealing with this, that your city is concerned, your city cares about you, and your city has a collective responsibility in how we deal with this. Not only with the social services that we employ as a city, but also calling on the community to be a partner. When you look deep inside community, you find strength, not weakness. And so we need our faith-based community. We need our youth leaders. We need the leaders of people who provide social services in many regards. And so, uh, as I said in the beginning of these remarks, it is an all hands on deck approach. Chief, did you wanna add some words? Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I want everyone to know that every life matters to me. Every life and homicides matter to uh, this administration. I get the calls from the mayor wanting to know about this homicide, the different homicides. I get the calls about the mayor wanting calling these, calling these families to give his condolences to. But this is an issue, uh, crime all across this country, not just Jackson, Mississippi. And it breaks my heart to see when we having uh, son take the life of his mother. Breaks my heart to see teenagers committing suicide. Breaks my heart to see a uh, homeless population. 
breaks my heart to see where you got mentally ill individuals roaming the city of Jackson and there's no help. No help from the state. It breaks my heart to see the stress on police officers when we living in a pandemic and the jail system can't hold misdemeanor offenders. And we have to let those individuals go. And Ms. Johnson wanted to know why is the police letting that individual go? Because of the pandemic, the jail's not taking them. So we play with many problems, but we're not, we don't settle for excuses. We try to find solutions. We're going to answer the call to our community. When they call the police, we're going to respond. Some of the contributing factors of the homicides that we see are interpersonal relationships. What I'm seeing is mental health issues. I'm seeing domestic problems issues, disputes issues. I'm seeing the pandemic issues. Moments of argument where individuals are hurting individuals they know. In many of these cases, they're taking the lives of individuals they know. People are living on the edge. The police officers on ills on the front line. We live that every day. And I have to be sensitive to our police officers when they come to me saying, Chief, we need some help with the mentally ill. Chief, we need some help with the homeless. Chief, we need some help with broken families where children are defending for themselves. We get homicides where you get kids, 13, 14, 15, with guns. Some of those cases, those kids lose their life. Broken homes. Those are the eyes that we, the, 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 those are the situations that we see each and every day. I talk to chiefs of police all across the state. They're having the same issues. You hear national news. Those issues are all across our nation. We have in a faith-based uh, community to coming together. The Faith in Blue weekend that we just had, we just ended today, that was orchestrated by the Department of Justice. Anytime the Department of Justice want to bring faith in police in the community, the problem is bigger than local police. The problem is where we all must pray. We all must hold each other accountable. And saying that, we need help. We need help. We need all hands on deck to address this issue. So I'm reaching out to the faith-based com faith community. I'm reaching out to moms, dads, homes. I'm reaching out to the school. I'm reaching out to government. I'm reaching out to the media. The media. And what I'm asking us all to do to cut down on our homicides is that tell people that you know that may be uptight for whatever reason, that having arguments, to please just walk away and live another day. If we do that, each and every one of us have an opportunity to do our part to address the violent crime here in Jackson, Mississippi. And for what I'm getting from the Department of Justice, we are ahead of many states as we roll out this first annual Faith in Blue. And we had many uh, events throughout the weekend, ever since Friday of last week, we had many events. And I'm proud of our officers, I am proud of our community, I'm proud of our faith-based initiative, I'm proud of the mayor. The mayor came out and prayed with us noon today. So we're not gonna give up the fight. Yesterday, Sunday, we started a new, new recruit class. We have a number, way over 80 applicants that is applying to be police officers. And we're looking to screen those individuals, train those individuals, and put those individuals on the streets to serve our great city. So thank you.
I'd like to once again thank Chief uh, Davis for his hard work and commitment uh, to the city of Jackson uh, and towards uh, producing a, a stronger, uh, more community-driven and engaged police department each and every day. Uh, I have always submitted to the notion that we are a lot more intelligent collectively than we are independent of one another. And so I am calling on everyone to be a part of holistic solutions to crime. Uh, that is why we employ and support things like credible messenger programs. Uh, that is why we uh, think that it is important that the city play a role in feeding families in our Jackson Meals Matter program. That's why we're excited about announcing uh, what we are announcing today and helping people with rental assistance who are facing the prospect of eviction. And we are happy to receive the resources uh, that we are receiving within our planning and development department to deal with these issues uh, each and every day. And so, uh, as I said in our prayer today, uh, we're calling out his ecclesia, that means his called out ones, the Lord's called out ones, uh, to all join in the fight. Uh, we know that it is the community that is closest to the solutions, and we need your support. And so uh, we want to encourage people to not take permanent solutions to temporary problems, but I make a commitment. I know my responsibility in this. I make a commitment that if we can receive support from the community that identifies people that are at the highest risk of being in conflict, of being in nefarious activity, that we will join them to find alternatives to whatever their problems are. Find them the social services that they need in whatever capacity. And so we are calling on the community to aid us in that regard. Because by the time JPD is called out, it has already gone too far. If you have any questions, we're prepared to accept them at this time. Yes. Were you going to address, or do you want to, can you address the election proposal regarding city workers mm -hmm. being given six hours. I do want to wrap those other things, but yeah. if you could address why you're doing that for a long period of time off. Well, well for, for multiple reasons. One, um, I readily admit to you uh, that I am in the number of individuals that believe that Election Day should be considered a federal holiday. Uh, it has such a significant bearing on the representation and the direction that we go in as a nation, and we need to remove all barriers that exist for people being able to uh, allow their vo voice to be heard through their vote. And so I want to be able to model that in the city of Jackson. Uh, I hope that there are other cities within our state that are doing so, uh, will choose to do so. Uh, many of my mayoral friends have chosen to do the same thing, understanding the great importance of election day. Uh, I would have done an, an entire day if state law would have allowed me to do so. State law prohibits uh, me from giving someone an entire day off uh, and paying them at the same time because it is considered an illegal donation uh, by state law. And so uh, we should not allow financial barriers. Obviously people are working because they need to meet the needs of their household and their families, uh, but that should, not, uh, that should not be something that inhibits them from being able to vote. Additionally, uh, I think that the time that we are in now calls on such a measure. We know that we are likely to experience very long lines due to COVID. Uh, there will more than likely be restrictions on the number of people that can be within a clo enclosed space. And so uh, we don't want anyone to be so deterred that they turn away from the polls and do not return. And so uh, I'm grateful for the sacrifice of city employees. Uh, and I want to make certain that they have the opportunity to uh, make their voice heard as well. If you remain mayor, would you make that the regular policy for just the presidential elections? Will you expand that to other type of election cycles? I, I believe that uh, first and foremost, your local elections are more important than even the national elections because this is where the rubber meets the road. Uh, I would verify that with our city attorney, that it is something that I can do, but I think that this should be a general practice in the city of Jackson. Getting back to the uh, online, the uh, Salvation Army mm -hmm. grant, how many families do you think this is going to be? Able to I would call on Major Lyle if, if you, you have any expectation or his team, because I, I hopefully, I mean, obviously, we want the, the money to be 
as effective as possible. Uh, but I don't know all of the you know, guidelines that, that, you know, may be restricted for certain families. Do you have any ex expect? Yeah. Um, so I get you to uh, go by the mic, so I can hear you. And how long will this be uh, going on? Sorry about that, Major. Well, again, oh, no, I don't mind the questions. Uh, I was hoping to get the opportunity because I failed to, uh, to uh, mention our wonderful staff that we have here with us today. Rolanda is our Director of Social Services and she told me that upwards of over 200 families should be able to receive assistance from this. It's all going to be based on what their needs are and how much, because again our goal is to keep them from becoming homeless. So there may be um, some that are as little as three to five hundred dollars or maybe some that may be into the thousands of dollars to keep them from becoming homeless. So that'll be based on the number of families based on their their biggest need. Uh, and this will go until the resources run out but the Salvation Army also has other resources that we try to use uh, to come alongside that. So again we don't really know the exact number but we are anticipating probably as many as 200 families or more will be able to receive assistance from this and uh, uh, again, we will be able to uh, keep better records of that so that if this continues in any form or fashion, we'll be able to better manage that or to budget that. What prompted you all? What are you seeing in the community that prompted you to want to work with the city of Jackson? Well, again, when we can work with, uh, when, uh, when there's at least two of us, we can make a big difference. And uh, the city of Jackson uh, and our social services uh, came together and just began talking about the need that's out there. When the phone rings off the hook, when we have to return 40 or 50 messages every morning because folks have called, uh, we know that there's a big need out there and our pot is only so big so to uh, partner with the city of Jackson and uh, the, the money that's available there, it's just going to help us help others become uh, better Jacksonians so that they can uh, take care of their family. And as a pastor, as a Christian, I love the faith-based initiative and knowing that at the Salvation Army, salvation is our middle name. And we just want everyone to know that there's hope and there's hope in Jesus and there's hope in when, city, when the city and the church can work together to make a difference. And an organization like the Salvation Army has proven over 150 years that we're here to meet the needs of people. It's about them and about meeting those needs. Contrasting with you Contrasting from last year when there was no COVID to what uh, we're undergoing now, what are you seeing in the community? How is the percentage of it being? I'm not much of a numbers guy, but I can tell you from last year to this year, we never slowed down during COVID. We continue to give out food. We continue to give out milk and bread and clothing. We continue to meet with folks and pay utilities the best we could. This community stepped up and helped the Salvation Army to do that. So we've seen a tremendous uptake in the number of people that are in need. And the number of people that we can help, we've also seen uh, a decline because, again, the larger the need, we have to have more resources. So this right here will allow us to help more people. And again, it's just a good thing for this community. And it's good to keep families together. No one wants to have to come home and say to their child, we're moving because we can't afford the rent. So again, we're very grateful for this, uh, this kind of resources to help people. I wanted to bring back the crowd if I could. Uh, I wanted to ask the mayor about the crowd situation. Let, let me add one point before you, you go there. Uh, first and foremost, I, I want to express uh, that there is dignity uh, for people to be able to pay their bills. And so no one wants to find themselves in that type of a circumstance. Um, and uh, it's not a matter of a handout, it's a hand up. Amen. And, and so um, when we're dealing with a circumstance, when you're personally dealing with a circumstance, even if it's court ordered, you don't want justice personally. You want mercy, right? Amen. You want someone to show mercy on you the way that the Lord shows mercy for us. And so um, I think that this is the best demonstration of who we are as a community. Uh, and then I will express one fear that I have. Far too often when we have programs of this caliber, the people that are in greatest need are not, um, don't have access to the process, meaning they are unaware. They are unaware. So we're not only speaking to people who directly face the issue of eviction. If you know a family that is facing the issue of eviction, uh, if you know someone who is less inclined uh, to go to the Salvation Army, to call the Salvation Army, please encourage them to do so. Uh, sometimes you will find that even when resources are available like this, 
many of those resources are not utilized because there are not enough people that know to call. And so I want to encourage people to do so. Yes, sir. Back to the crime issue and talking about the start of a recruit class. Can you expedite recruit classes to augment the low number of police officers that you're now dealing with mm -hmm. to deal with this problem? Well, uh, we have, as the chief said, we have 60 uh, individual, 60 or 80? 80 plus. 80, 80 plus individuals that have expressed interest. Uh, but we want to make certain that they are prepared for the job. And so that requires a number of things. It requires a psychological evaluation. Uh, it requires uh, fitness tests. It requires uh, a number of other uh, written tests that take place. And so we don't want to skip that process because that process is important. We are grateful uh, that we have been able to make adjustments uh, in the salary scale. We changed the scale so that it makes it more attractive. And so uh, I'm thankful for the chief and, and all of the people that serve in his command staff for their good work. Prior to his administration, there had been one class in a four-year period. For a city our size, uh, it is definitely important that we have multiple classes within a year. Uh, but once again, I do want to emphasize that what we are looking towards are holistic solutions to crime. Just as important as the announcement of a recruiting class or as the announcement of social services that help people avoid things like eviction and other um, socioeconomic challenges that they face. Thank you very much. We appreciate y'all.